2006 Ford Expedition with the dreaded 5.4 three valve Triton motor. As everyone knows, the Triton is uh, one of the worst Ford motors ever made. They always have the cam phaser and the solenoid issues, uh, the VVT solenoids that go out. Uh, owner complains that it's running rough, hesitation. They put a new transmission in it. They put new tires on it. And I truly told them that doing the valves with the uh, cam phasers and doing the solenoids is a very slim chance of this uh, working properly after it's done. I told him it's going to be about $1,500 to $2,000 in labor and parts. And he said, go ahead and do it. The owner stated that he also replaced all eight spark plugs by himself, which is a, uh, well, kind of a miracle because these tend to break off inside the head and you have to... <laughs> All kinds of uh, stuff you got to do to get that out, uh, besides removing the head. But he was able to successfully do it himself. By all means, he did it. He put new coil packs on it. But in doing so, he broke that. So he's requesting me to put that back on with the uh, the vacuum hose back on. You can see I, I started up to come inside. Also said that the transmission dipstick was broken not going into the transmission even after the new transmission was put in they gobbledygooped it and didn't put the two o-rings on like they should have so easiest way to start is remove all your plastics remove your intake remove the, basically everything has to go I always pull the radiator this is the third one I'm doing so I pull out the radiator pull off all the hoses and that gives me gobs of room to get in there to remove the front cover of the timing chain, the timing chain cover. That's what it sounds like running. And you can hear it sounds like it has a miss. So I think when, before I start anything, first thing I'm gonna do is pull all eight spark plugs back out just to verify the compression in all eight cylinders. Because if one of them cylinders are bad, there's no use on going any further. Put the ignition to start. And not start, but just on. I come down here to my code scanner. See if we get a good view here. Ve vehicle diagnostic. Auto ID. Enter, enter. It picked it right up. Enter. Okay. We got two OBD codes and three ECM codes. So I'll come down here and just hit down. Oh, oh, enter. And there we go. Oxygen sensor. He already replaced it, so that's good. Oxygen sensor, he already replaced it, that's good. Onboard diagnostic two, monitor drive cycle test not complete. Oxygen, oxygen. And that's all of them. Interesting. It does not have the typical code for a cam phaser fault. To test your coil packs, all you need is a volt ohm meter, really just an ohm meter. This is the cheap and cheesy one that I had for many, many years. Basically, you stick one in the bottom, and on the inside, you test each plug, and it has to read between five and eight. Right there, we got seven. And seven again. So we know that one's good. Five. Five. So I've already checked them all, but that's how you do it. You just make sure they're between five and seven or five and eight. 
that that's how you check them. Spark plugs. Uh, they've seen better days, but they're not terrible. At least they all match. They have been replaced recently because they came out way too easy. Now what we're going to be doing is a compression test. Checking compression on each cylinder. So. about 130. That's our highest one yet, about 135. So you saw what I did, we have the second one from the back wall is the lowest at 90, about 85, 90 uh, BSI compression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove a little uh, WD-40 in there to lube it up a little bit, crank it over a few more times, and then reread it. And like that, a little WD-40 in the cylinder. We're right back up to 130. We are within spec.
James was able to get his side off before mine. The passenger side is always a lot harder than the driver's side because you have a lot more hoses and wires to get around. Engine does look like it's been around the block. You can see here, that's all the gobbly goop you gotta get around to get into it. And he's doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking off all the pulleys and stuff in order to get this whole front cover off. All right, to get the passenger side valve cover off, you need about three inches of clearance, clearance to get to the back of, you can see the, the lobe sitting up off the motor about three inches. So you need, you need to be able to pull that up about three inches up and over. So in order to do so, way back here tucked in behind the battery, you see he's trying to point to it. There is a grounding, not a grounding strap, but a mounting bracket for the two big hoses. You remove that bracket, it's just a little 10 millimeter, and it, them two big thick hoses move about three inches up, giving you just enough clearance to take that valve cover off. The front's ready to come off too. Okay, so I've been working on this, or we've been working on this for about two hours, and in the two hours, the only thing we've really got done is remove the two valve covers. However, we are almost done removing the front timing chain also. We just got to pull the front pulley. So, to be continued.